going to show you how to make the Medi Rescue pouch from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping, a selection of threads, one with matching bobbin for the border, my squizzers, masking tape, a couple of D-rings, some gross grain ribbon and some very thin um, Velcro cable ties. I've also got two pieces of clear vinyl one's for the name pocket and the other one's just to create um, a little pocket that uh, a medical plan can be slipped, slipped underneath and I've also got my fabrics and batting cut to size the batting that I'm using is Insul Bright Thermo Insular Batting and that's just to prevent temperature fluctuations of the syringes you're going to start off by hooping your two layers of wash away stabiliser and you're going to pin around the top edge of your inner hoop take your pin place it on top of your inside hoop frame push it through bring it back round and back through the stabiliser and that's going to anchor your stabiliser in the hoop and stop it being dragged down and loosening Load file A into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. Place your insular batting over the top of the outline and tape it in place. There is no right and wrong side with the one that I'm using but make sure that you get yours the right way round if it's a different brand. You're then going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. We're now going to trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line. Place your front fabric over the top and tape it in place. Load whichever thread colour you want for the quilting into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number three and that's going to secure your fabric to the hoop and then quilt it. The quilted side will become the outside of your pouch. Next you're going to stitch colour number four and that's going to give you the placement outline for the name pocket. For my uh, name tag pouch I cut a piece of rectangular um, clear vinyl. I took a bobbin and placed it halfway over the edge and then just drew round um, drew round it to create a half moon shape and I'm going to cut that out so that a name tag can be easily slipped in and out. So I'm just going to cut that out now and if you do it in biro it wipes off very easily after you finish with the outline. So there's my half moon shape and just a damp cloth afterwards will remove or even with my finger it's coming off will remove any of the the biro left on the plastic. So there's the name tag placement. I'm going to put the um, plastic right up to the edge stitching on this side. It's overlapping everywhere else and my half moon cut out is halfway between the top and bottom line and then I'm just going to tape it in place. We're now going to stitch colour 5 and that's going to secure it in place. You're now going to trim up around the edge of uh, the vinyl 
don't cut um, too close to the stitching because you don't want to cut through it and that's your name pocket complete you're now going to add your backing so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour number six trim up the excess fabric from both front and back of your hoop so turn your hoop over Load your matching bobbin and thread into your machine for the border and then you're going to stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag at the raw edge here. You're now going to do the satin stitch border. So making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch colour number eight. Next is colour number 9 and that's going to do the straight stitch on top of the satin stitching. And that's the bottom and inner front flap of your pouch complete. We're now going to free this from the hoop so turn it over and trim around the edge. We're now going to trim up the, uh, to neaten up the edge here because this is going to be our drawing line. And that's your panel complete. You can now set that aside for a minute. We're now going to stitch panel B twice. Once again you're going to hoop two layers of wash away stabiliser and pin it. Then you're going to stitch colour number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour two. Trim up the excess batting Place your front fabric over the outline Tape it in place Making sure that you've got the thread colour that you want for the quilting loaded into your machine You're now going to stitch colour number 3 We're now going to add your backing fabric, so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number four to secure it. now going to remove the excess fabric from both front and back of the hoop so turn your hoop over load your matching bobbin and thread into your machine 
and then you're going to stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag at the raw edge we're now going to do the satin stitching around the border so making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread loaded into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number six Next you're going to stitch colour number 7 and that's going to do the top stitch run. And you're now going to free your panel from the hoop. And we're now going to trim up the raw edge ready for the join and that's our panel complete and you now want to stitch another panel B once again you're going to hoop two layers of wash away stabilizer and pin it load file C into your machine and then you're going to stitch colour number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour two. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line. Place your front fabric over the batting and tape it in place. Load your thread colour for the quilting into your machine and then you're going to stitch colour number three. Load your thread colour th for the word anaphylaxis into your machine and then you're going to stitch colour number four. Load your red thread for the background of the medic alert symbol into your machine. And then you're going to stitch colour number five. Change your thread colour to white for the border around the um, medical alert symbol. And then you're going to stitch colour number six. Now that all the detail stitching is finished, we're going to add the backing fabric. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Load your matching bobbin and thread for the border into your machine and then you're going to stitch colour number seven and that's going to secure your backing fabric in place. We're now going to trim up the excess fabric from both front and back of your hoop. So turn your hoop over. making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread loaded into your machine for the border you're now going to stitch colour number eight and that's going to zigzag around the raw edge making sure you've got your matching bobbin and thread loaded into your machine for the satin stitching around the border you're now going to stitch colour number nine 
and lastly you're going to stitch colour number 10 and that's the run of top stitching. You're now going to free this from the hoop. we're now going to trim up the raw edge ready for when we join it to the next panel. And you can now put your panel aside for the minute. So this is the final hooping. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer as you have throughout. Load file D into your machine and then you're going to stitch curler number one to give you your placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch Round number two. Trim up the excess batting from around the stitch line. Place your front fabric over the batting and tape it in place. Load whichever colour thread you want for the quilting into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number three. Now you're going to add your backing fabric so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour 4 to secure it. Trim up the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop. So turn your hoop over. We're now going to start joining our panels. So starting with panel A, we're going to sit this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here. And I'm going to pit, put a couple of pins in to hold it in place. The stitch line is going to be along on top of this one here. So we need to make sure that our pins are right out the way of the stitch line so I'm going to put mine right up against the side of my hoop and I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to hold that flat. Load your matching bobbin and thread into your machine um, that's going to be for the satin stitching eventually but as there's no extra colours to add, we're going to put it in now. So you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour 5. And that's going to zigzag and join these two panels. We're now going to add this bottom panel. And that's panel B. So line it up with this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here. And if you try and keep your um, top stitching line level with this, it will line up beautifully. Put 
pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour number six and that's going to zigzag and join these two panels. Now you're going to add panel C on this side and exactly the same thing you're going to line this stitch line up onto top of this stitch line here. And once more keeping the pins right out of the way of the stitch line. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour 7. And we're now going to do the same on the last panel. I'm going to turn my hoop round so that I can see what I'm doing. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to join these last two uh, panels together. Okay so we now come to the slightly technical bit. Before we go any further can I just say a big thank you to Christine Thibodeau who lives in Canada because she kindly sent me her double empty tubes so that I was able to do this. What I've done is wrapped my cable, uh, velcroed cable ties around um, my tubes. I've got two because they're not quite long enough um, to do them singly. So all I've done is wrap them round end to end and it doesn't have to be tight it's only for positioning so I've turned my hoop over so we're working from the back because the back is actually the inside of your pouch so once you're happy with the alignment of your straps and you don't have to do put straps on for this it is purely optional but I'm going to show you how to do it just in case you want to so place your straps in position so that you know that they're going to close and then I'm going to open it out and I've already marked on mine where the, uh, um, I've got to line it up in relation to my panel. It just makes it a little bit easier and you can do the same of course. And then I'm going to tape it down. And the same for this one. So that's the inside straps taken care of for the minute. I'll be trimming these off afterwards. All that falls within this area here, I will be chopping off and just keeping the outsides. So now we're going to turn our hoop over. And now you have to decide where you want your straps or um, strap hangers. Now, I don't advise using the nylon webbing for this because the stitching will absolutely shred it. It's better to use a cotton gross grain. So I've got my D-rings and I've decided that I want a shoulder strap for mine. And I also want to put on um, some belt loops. Now you can put your um, straps and loops however you like, across this way, across this way, entirely up to you. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do the um, loops for the D-rings and my belt loops 
all in one um, hit. So I'm going to push that through there. And I think I'm going to double mine. Now anything metal you must keep out of the way of this stitch line otherwise you're going to trash your machine. So I'm going to place that there, grab my scissors and trim off there. You can do your single, you don't have to do double, I'm just doing this out of ease I suppose. <laughs> Then when you're happy with the placement, in fact, I'm going to line my D-ring up with the um, first line of uh, quilting there and then it'll make it easy to line both up. So that's the first bit in. Now I'm going to take this side down. And I'm going to do the same for the top. I'm going to turn this around so that I can see what I'm doing. And I want these to be roughly the same distance from the top and bottom. And take your time lining it up. It's well worth it. And I think I'm just going to pop a little bit over the middle here just to make sure that it's laying nice and flat. Okay, trim this edge off. We're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to triple stitch down this edge here. It's going to do each side one by one which allows you to tweak and reposition if you need to or add further straps on if you wanted. So if you've got anything to add along this edge here, any loops or anything, add them now. And then once you've positioned them, you're then going to stitch colour 10 to secure them. Next is the right hand side. So if you've got anything to add to that side, do so now. And then you're going to secure it in place with round number 11. And now the same for the top, so if you've got any loops to add there, do so now and then secure them with round number 12. We're now going to trim up all the bits that we don't want, so I'm going to trim up these tails. And on the back of the hoop, I'm going to trim away the straps that fall inside here. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch colour number 13 and that's going to zigzag all the way around over your fixtures and fittings and so that they're nice and secure.
have a quick check to make sure that there's no threads poking through the zigzagging. They look absolutely fine. Making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread in your machine. You're now going to stitch round number 14 and that's going to satin stitch all round the edge here and hide all the workings. So that's the satin stitch stitched. You will notice where the, um, there's uneven layers around this edge that there's a few white pieces poking through of my gross grain ribbon. So I'm just going to take a, a red sharpie and just touch up those areas that are poking through. We've got one more round of stitching to do and that's the top stitching but before we do that I want to add a little um, plastic pocket so that I can tuck a, a, a piece of paper underneath so I've turned my hoop over and align your clear vinyl wherever you want it and then you're just going to tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 15. And that's going to secure your vinyl and finish off the top stitching on the outside. So that's all the stitching finished. I'll turn this over and we now just got to trim up the um, transparent vinyl here. And exactly the same as you did for the little pocket for the name tag. Just trim along, not too close to the stitching because you don't want to cut through it. Now all that remains is to free this from the hoop. So I'm going to bring my um, straps over because I don't want to cut them accidentally. And we're now going to free this from the hoop. Take care not to cut anything on the back of course. We're now going to dissolve the excess stabilizer from around the edges. So I've got warm water and a cotton bud here. I'm just going to dip it in and wipe it around the edge. The next little job we need to do is to press these over 
you're going to press on a, a crease on the second um, quilting line here and here and you're also going to do the same on the end pieces if you need to work out where to fold just fold that over and that's going to fold round like that press that in place and it, it will stay nicely because we put the stitch line the hidden stitch line should I say underneath here so I'm now going to press my creases in so I've pressed my creases in and they will then form the sides this one here will form the bottom and this is the top so that will all fold round like so My little slip of paper can now go inside there and the um, EpiPens will fit in there like so. All that remains to do now is to put the cam snaps on so that it all snaps together to form the pouch. We now need to decide where we're going to add the cam snaps to keep it all closed. So fold it up so that it sits how you want it to. and then pin or clip the two inner flaps in, in place. Take um, a water soluble uh, chalk pen and then just mark where you want your cam snaps to sit. And I'm using 12 millimeter ones so I've marked that side I'm now going to swap the flaps over and then I'm going to mark the other side so next we're going to create the holes for the uh, to push the spikes of the uh, cam snaps through and we're going to go through both layers at the same time and be careful of your fingers you don't want to stab them so I'm going to start off with these ones and now I'm going to swap these over but I'm going to use the spike as my guide for lining the two panels up and just pop a clip in and now I'm going to do this side okay so that's where my snaps are going to be positioned for the to hold the two inner flaps together as I mentioned before these are T5 um, cam snaps and that means that they're 12 millimeters across you can use T5s or T3s it's entirely up to you so we've got the holes we're now going to push um, the buttons through the holes 
we want to push them from the back here so that we can fit a male or a female onto this side and then we're going to push them so that the buttons are on this side for this flap and the males or well, should I say the opposite um, snap to what's on here will be on the back here so we're going to start off by pushing these through and then decide whether you're going to have the males on here or the females I'm going to put the males on place it over the spike take your tool the button uh, sits in the black cup and the male or female on uh, inside the the clear part and then you just squeeze and that's now firmly seated So now the spike will go down from the top this time. Now I'm attaching the females. that part done next we're going to do the uh, front flaps and we're going to do them in exactly the same way I'm only putting two on the front and they're going to go here and here so first off I just want to make sure that everything's lined up nicely I'm going to mark with my pen where I want them. I'm going to take this out for a minute. And now I'm going to create the holes. So this time we're going to have the buttons coming up from here through to here and we're going to have either the male or females on this side and then the buttons will go down on the front with the opposite of the pair on the back.
and I'm putting a male on. And this time I'm pushing the button down. And the female's going on these. Now all you need to do is make yourself a strap and you've got yourself a nice pouch and that's our Medi Rescue pouch finished. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new stitch alongs as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other useful information, including discount codes. Mm -hmm.